morning. It's working. Um, we're having some work done to the house. We actually have a termite issue. Yeah, so that's not fun, but that's getting taken care of today. I think they're all currently working on math this? practice. Hold on. 40. So I feel like stuff is so messy. I need to still go through all of those down there because they're a whole hot mess. We've got a new textbook, friends. I picked up the Advanced Human Nutrition. This is another one of those reasons why it's so hard for me to share here sometimes because the way we do things is just kind of different. And um, sometimes I feel like it's not easily translatable or helpful to other homeschoolers necessarily, but I'm just gonna start sharing. Um, so one thing I really want in our homeschool lives is a very strong foundation in human nutrition. My degree is actually in human nutrition foods and exercise and I was really looking for a nice solid textbook to work through um, over the years and so this is the textbook I landed on it has a dynamic technology solution which makes me happy um, hopefully it will help me break down and add assessments and all that stuff to some of our nutrition work and my goal really is to freshen up my um, knowledge <laughs> in my degree and then also to pull out whatever I'm inspired to pull out um, to create a nice well-rounded uh, course of study over the years on nutrition foods and exercise for the kids so that's that I added that to my list this was a nice this took me back to the years of buying textbooks this one was not inexpensive um, but I know that I'll be using it over the years, and I'm excited about that. We are the Falco family. Brian, Serena, Cameron, Kendall, and Savannah. A family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education. Learning to document our adventures in homeschool and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn. Are you counting your steps? No, I can't count steps. Uh, oh, so you did I'm tell just, me that yesterday. So Okay. <laughs> Morning walk. And of course the kids are running. <laughs> Instead of well, walking. But that's okay. Here's my big kid. <laughs> and what about your medium kid? Yeah. You're <laughs> There's my big kid and my medium kid, he says. So yeah. Today, let's talk about homeschooling in the big kid years. Oh, yeah, it's good. You're probably going to be able to tell mommy now. What? <laughs> what? So, I guess it's a thing that they have a countdown to see how long it takes them to become taller than their mom. Let's be in sync. Okay. Ready? <laughs> Teaching him um, magic. Cameron. One of the last times you guys will see the kitchen this way because soon and very soon it will be remodeled and it's gonna be such a celebration friends what do you mean a few so the kids are working on their work work right now i mean i put seven in i got seven. zero seven <laughs> yeah Oh friends. Okay, so I don't know what I ended up 
recording from today at all but i just wanted to try to get back into the swing of things as far as talking to you guys and i vlogging the day it was a good day well it's been a good day thus far we still have more to go um a lot of it is making sure everybody has meals and making sure i am available to help everybody through their work for the day and then lots of other projects and extracurricular activities um i feel like the most that has been going on has been with cameron um you know he turned 13 he got braces he is in a soccer program two basketball programs he's about to start an aau program today so we went out and got uh, new sneakers for his new season and a lot of that has just been a lot of fun and you hear things uh, as your kids grow older you know when they get around the age of two and people want to share with you all about the terrible twos and um, when they get to another age and people want to share with you all about the you know um, mostly the downs of that particular age and one thing I think I talked about this in another video was just kind of protecting this transition um, I feel like there is a quick jump from these um the like double digits and into the teenage years and people like to say a lot of things they have a lot of things to say about um the preteen and teenage years and honestly i have been enjoying every bit of it like all of the ups and you know what people like to call maybe downs i really don't see them as downs like i'm just constantly looking forward um, to the challenges that are ahead and I have been soaking up every moment of it and I think that is a lot of the reason why um, you know some of the things that we've tried in the past or things that projects that we have set I've set to work on um, I'm fine with those things being like low and slow you know what I mean so we are still working on our book we have opened up and uh, closed and paused shops. We had our friends club and our Patreon fam, which which I really enjoyed and loved. But sometimes you could just be working on something good that um, may not be specifically for the time period that you're in. So I'm looking forward to getting back into those things eventually. But as of right now, like I am all completely just all the way into the big kid years. So... I talked about um, in another video just kind of protecting this transition like from one stage to another and some of the things that I kind of like keep a note to myself as to how to make sure that I'm protecting that transition and I always write things down in my phone so I'll just kind of share with you the, the notes like the really simple notes that I take for myself. Um, I wrote down four things really uh, for me uh, as i am endeavoring to like really protect this transition from these early double digits into the teenage years because uh the reality is that a lot of times uh, with the changes that come you know as they're getting older we tend to allow ourselves to see them negatively and it just i feel like for me I refuse to let it be that way. And I know that things that seem a bit negative may come along, but again, I just really wanna focus in on, there's a scripture that says, consider it joy if you encounter trials, for it's only for the proving of your faith that you may be fully developed and lacking nothing. So um, considering challenges joy is really something that um, I'm always, we are always working on here at the Volvo family. So I'm just gonna share with you before I ramble on and on and the things that I have written down to help me remember. And the first one is empathy. Um, I, if anybody knows me well, they know that I'm pretty much an empath. It has brought about so many challenges in my life, but I am learning as I get older, all the goodness that comes with being extremely, like overwhelmingly empathetic. Um, but that's something that I always wanna keep at the forefront. Um, in any transition from one stage to another with the kids, whether it's homeschool or just life in general. Um, just understanding, like really putting myself in that position and allowing myself to feel and um, 
to feel what it might feel to be in that place. So that's something that I've always, always practiced and I feel like always brings forth good fruit is to just be empathetic. It's not about sympathy, it's not about demanding your own way, it's about like putting yourself in their position, in their shoes, and trying to just kind of feel what life would ex would be like and what you would experience being where they are so that's the first thing i want to keep in mind the next thing is written communication i feel like this is really important for us um i just kind of put beside that journals text letters um things like that are really important because i think that as they're getting older and they're processing life um and they're just trying to figure things out and sort through like new emotions and new experiences and new feelings sometimes we can really want to press them to communicate but in one specific way so there's a lot of you know talk to me and you i find myself wanting them to explain things thoroughly but that's just not um that is not always um something I feel like I should expect of them to communicate in a very specific way. So what I wanted to do was make sure that I'm opening up different ways of communication um, and just being like turning my heart towards there being other ways to communicate thoughts and feelings. And so I feel like text messages, you know, um, through our devices or journaling is a big deal. And journaling or letter writing things like that just give them another option another way to communicate their thoughts and feelings as they are trying to navigate like getting older and exploring the world in like a new and different way um because it's hard out here <laughs> like <laughs> um as we get older we go from like being completely coddled and cared for to having like roles and responsibilities and that's a lot like that's a lot on kids I think the next thing I have on here is to provide resources for the journey. I think it's really important to provide like books and articles and um, programming, whether it's TV or movie, you know, television shows or movies or videos, things that help them to find something that they can relate to or they can, that they can find words to express things that they're feeling. Because, I mean, adults barely have words to properly express how they're feeling. So for us to expect for kids to know exactly how to communicate what they're feeling and to be able to sort through them and, um, and convey those things in a very mature way is a lot for you to expect of um, a child without providing resources in order to help them do that. You know what I mean? So I am forever like um, bookmarking television shows that have like good examples or, um, or books is a lot of the way that we carve out like different examples of how um, a child how a child might feel in a certain situation and just those are really big for me is making sure that I provide resources <gasps> providing resources that give them more information about what they might be experiencing and then the last thing I have is um this one's really <laughs> important to me is to make a memory keeping plan this is like a big deal for me right now because I think that when kids are babies when they're babies when they're little you know you're just sitting around hugging and kissing all day long <laughs> so it's just a lot easier to point the camera um at you know whatever they're doing stumbling as they take their first steps um, as they are talking for the first time, you just always have your camera out and you're getting all the things, you know, more than you really need. Um, and it's just easier then. But as they get older, you find that it is more and more challenging to like pull the camera out and take pictures and get video clips and stuff with them because maybe they don't, you know, really love being see seen uh, on the camera. And this is not even stuff with like that I would be sharing with the rest of the world but just stuff in general they tend to like you know be processing as they're growing like how they're changing and things like that so they may be a little less likely um to be camera ready and they might be a little bit more camera shy and i've noticed um those things and it makes you kind of pull away and oftentimes it might make you kind of pull away and and not think to stop and take selfies and take video clips and 
ask silly questions and laugh on a video clip or you know write in your journal they had their first this or they had you know this happened for the first time you're just kind of a little less likely to do that than you are when they're losing their first tooth or you know they're having their first solid food and so that's something i really wanted to focus in on is i kind of had a vision for what memory keeping would look like when they were little and i wanted to go back to the drawing board and have a vision for what memory keeping looks like as they're getting older um yeah because i don't want to misconstrue their you know uh, processing life as them not wanting you around as much you just need to be around in a different way you know and i wanted to have more of a vision for that as we move into these years so that was it <laughs> i don't want to get super rambly because y'all know i can but i really but i really wanted to talk about that a little bit and have that documented here in this space and you guys are just like really great at chiming in and just kind of at chiming in and just kind of like sharing some of the things that you guys have experienced or things that you're going through or stumbling through because that's what this is all about for us is living and learning but this is something i'm really really into right now is just protecting these big kid years you know what i mean and giving them room to you know accept responsibility but also helping them walk through it you know step by step day by day without having some kind of overwhelming attitude that i don't you know if i don't get responses that i'm interested in getting if that makes any sense so yeah it's all about experiencing this next stage with them and just soaking it all up just like i soaked up all of the little kid years you know so that's all i have to say <laughs> yeah so this is how i feel welcome to the big kid years friends if you have any like insight or advice or you want to share experiences um that relate to you know transitioning into the big kid years we would love to hear it you can talk to us in the comments below but i just know that your girl is over here eating it all the way up you know the good the bad the ugly whatever you want to call it it's all a part of the journey and i'm loving every bit of it so i'm loving my 13 year old loving my 11 year old loving my eight year old how she's and the fact that she's eight and going on 23, loving all of that too, okay? <laughs> but anyway, life is so very full of lessons. I'm going to get back to being in the kitchen again because I feel like I'm always in there. If you think that you're in the kitchen a lot when the kids are super little, like when they start to get to this stage, friends, this nine to 13 and I can't even talk about 13 and beyond okay but this stage I feel like I'm always in the kitchen and I want to like enjoy that more so I'm really excited about getting um our kitchen uh redone and just kind of like reimagining what that's going to look like for us to be all in and throughout those that space you know more than ever basically so yeah just a lot of life going on a lot of learning going on a lot of adjusting and growing and that type of thing around these parts and yeah thank you for hanging in there i know you guys were really enjoying the uh steady uploads in the beginning you know months of the years and then this last month we just kind of had to take a little bit of a break or pause because just things were amping up in life and we're just flowing with it and really enjoying it so thank you for being along for the ride as always life is so full of lessons and our goal as always is to live and to learn i'll see you in the next one bye don't forget to subscribe